basketball, the mental game is just as important, if not more important, than the physical side. How do we get in the zone? How do we get on fire? How are we able to lead a team? How are we able to will a team to a win? Those are all questions and skills that really every great player has mastered. But it's not exclusive to them. Every hooper can get into that same mindset. So I'll give you a couple tips on how to do just that. Alright, so what is the zone in basketball? So everyone kind of has a different definition for it, but everyone's felt it. Everyone's been on fire before. It's that state of mind where it just seems like everything's going your way. You're not thinking about your shooting form. You're not thinking about where your teammates are, where your defenders are. Everything is just happening. Everything's just flowing. And in that zone, everything just seems to go your way. You start making more shots. You start making moves that you perfected in workouts but never really used in the game. And even when things do go wrong, they seem to just kind of rub right off. All that preparation you put in, it's starting to show. But getting into that zone, it's not really just a switch that you can flip on and flip off. It starts years and years before you even get into a game. And then leads up all the way into the game. So I'll give you kind of a chronological timeline of how to get into that zone, how to get locked in. So first, locking in on the basketball court, that's a skill. It's something that you have to practice, just like shooting the ball or handling the ball. You have to learn how to kind of shut your mind up, to be on that court and just let everything flow. So I'll give you a few techniques that I use myself and I also implement them with some of the players I work with. So first is kind of a unique one. If you're in a workout and you find yourself just missing a ton of shots, overanalyzing your shot, it seems like every shot is different. Turn on some music, preferably a song or a couple songs that you know all the words to. Then just get somebody to rebound for you or just get your own rebounds and just start singing along in your head. Forget about the fact that you're even shooting and just go with that music. At that point, your mind kind of shuts off towards the basketball side. You're just letting everything flow. You're not thinking about your shot. You're not thinking about where your wrist is at. You're just letting it fly. And then once you get into that zone, I guarantee you once you turn that music off, it's gonna flop. Another thing I do is rapid fire shots. So if you have two people working out with you, you get one rebounder and one passer. If you have two basketballs, you just have them consistently rotate. So you're getting a shot every second or two. At this point, you can't even really think about your shooting form. You're just shooting. And once again, at this point, your mind shuts off. It has no choice. It doesn't have the time to be analyzing your shot and every little thing that's going on with it. You'll find that you probably shoot a higher percentage like this than if you shoot, wait a couple seconds, shoot, move around the arc, wait a couple seconds, shoot. Because of this, you're thinking, you're consciously thinking about your shooting form. So lastly, it's just play basketball more often. In workouts, you're analyzing everything. You're making sure that everything's perfect. And that's okay, that's the point of a workout. But when you're just hooping, whether it's one-on-one, two-on-two, three-on-three, five-on-five, once again, you don't have the time to be analyzing this. And if you do, it's probably messing you up. This is how you're really gonna apply that zone that you're learning to get into with these other techniques into a real game. So go hoop with good competition. Find some guys that you know, or just go to a local gym and find some good competition and just have fun with it. All right, so now you're before the game. What should that mindset be right now? So this is really about trial and error. Different players have different mindsets before the game. It's natural. So some players may be more a little bit easygoing in preparation. So you see Steph, he's laughing, he's joking before the game. Even in his pregame workout, he's having fun with it, shooting those shots from the tunnel. And this is for a reason. He's an easygoing player. So it makes sense that in his preparation, he'll be pretty easygoing. And then other players, you may find them listening to more intense music. They're not really talking to teammates. They're not dancing around laughing. They're sitting down, really locking in. And that's okay too. Everyone has different personalities. It's about finding which one works best for you. Although most players will fall right in that middle ground. But also kind of try to fit it to that playing style that you have. So Steph, like I said, is an easygoing player. He has fun with everything he does on the court. Whereas LeBron's preparation is a little bit more intense because when he gets on the court, he's more locked in. I'm coming right at you, killer mentality type thing. Same with Kobe, even a more radical example. So if you feel like you have a hard time getting into the zone in games, just see which one works best for you. Even if it's a pickup game, try to get yourself in different moods before the game and to see which one works best for you. And also the majority of guys, if they had to choose between a workout and a game, which one they play better in, they definitely choose the workout. That's because in a workout and even before a workout, you're not thinking, I have to do well in this. I have to perform to the best of my abilities. You're going in there to get better. You're going in there to do what you like to do, to do what you know how to do. And that's play basketball. 
But a lot of guys, once they get into that game, it's a little bit more difficult for them. They're overanalyzing. You don't do that in a workout because there's no pressure in the workout. So the question is, how can we get into this workout mentality? And that's tough. Also, not to mention, the pregame workout is really essential, whether it's a college game, high school game, pro game. Just the fact that you can start seeing that ball go in, feel comfortable dribbling the ball, feel comfortable finishing at the rim. That'll lead to so much more trust in your abilities during the game. So use that music technique. Use that rapid fire technique. You've already done all the preparation. Just see the ball go in and just know that you're ready to hoop. Be confident, start trusting your abilities. At this point, it's time to just let go and hoop. And then lastly, I'll say this. Without preparation years and years beforehand, none of this is possible. All of this goes out the window. Preparation is a prerequisite for confidence. Confidence is a prerequisite for trust. And trust is a prerequisite for getting in that zone. The more you do something, the more you do it the same way over and over again. And the same goes for your jumper, or really any skill in the game of basketball. If you shoot your jumper tens or hundreds of thousands of times, you're probably going to be shooting the same way every time. And if you know you're shooting the same way every time, there's no need to think about it in the game. There's no need to analyze it or overthink it. You're just letting it go because you know it's going to come out the same way as it has for the last hundreds of thousands of times. And that's for your whole game. Ball handling, passing, shooting, even on the leadership side. Just do what you know how to do. Trust your preparation and then just let it flow. You put in the work, now it's time to show it off.